Oh, and welcome to Just One More Watch. If you are a regular on the channel, you know that I have a love-hate relationship with Bulova. Their new releases, their contemporary stuff, frankly, I think it speaks for itself, each to their own, of course, but there is just nothing here that appeals to me in the slightest. Whereas their old stuff, their retro reissues, I cannot get enough of them. Whether it's the Luna Pilot, the Mill Ships, the Hack, the Aerojet, I pretty much love them all. So today I am delighted to be able to bring you yet another Bulova reissue. And indeed, it's another 50th anniversary reissue. It's the 50th anniversary of the Bulova parking meter. So called because it has an old school parking meter silhouette on the dial. Now, I did not just buy one, although I have been tempted, I will admit. It is kindly on loan to the channel from a subscriber over in WA called Paul. Thank you very much again, Paul. He has loaned me a bunch of stuff in the past. And indeed, there were a pair of Titanium Citizen Pro Masters in the same bag as this Bulova. Stay tuned. Now, I gotta say, this is one of the most unusual watches that I have seen in a while. It must have looked otherworldly in 1973, and it's still pretty mad looking today. Let's flip the camera and get into it. Okay, as I'm getting into the box, let's talk about my favorite subject, money. Aussie RRP is 750, Aussie online discount retailer price is 599, Aussie online discount retailer weekend flash sale price is 399. That's how much Paul paid for his, so roughly half of the RRP. You would need to have your head examined if you're buying a Bulova at RRP. You do get a nice box though, one appropriate for the price you're paying, and so long as your online discount retailer is an authorised dealer, you got a full three year warranty, which is pretty good for an affordable watch. And just look at the thing, you can of course tell why they call it a parking meter, because it has that old school parking meter silhouette in the centre, housing the two sub-registers. This is definitely a bit of a weird one today, not just because of that silhouette on the dial, it's a bullhead chronograph, as you can clearly see, the crown operating the movement is north of the 12, with the two chrono pushers at the 11 and the 1. But what about the second crown, the one at the 6? What does it do, I hear you ask? Well, I'll show you in just a minute. I will show you the case back of this one first though, not because it's particularly remarkable, because it does rather cover this watch's backstory. This is a reissue on the 50th anniversary of the original watch's release, the 31008-6W, aka the parking meter. These are being produced in a limited numbered run of 5,000. As you can see, this one is in the low fours. I don't think we can take too much from that number though. I'm sure Bulova don't ship them out in sequential order from the factory. So this is what the reissue looks like then, and as with all of Bulova's other recent reissues, it's a relatively faithful copy of the original, in spirit at least, as I shall now demonstrate by skillfully blending in the original. Have a look at the two sub-registers though as we go back and forth because they're not exactly the same. The reissue has a 24 hour register at the 12 and it's a 60 minute chrono timer at the 6. The old watch appears to have a 12 hour chronograph with a 30 minute sub dial at the 12 and 12 hour register at the 6. There's also the addition of hour markers on the new watch, sitting just beyond the minute track and just inboard of the angled blue tachymeter scale. By the way, the photo of the original is taken from an eBay listing, a current eBay listing. There's a few dollars in these old ones in 2023, aren't there? Just pushing six grand. I think I'll stick with the reissue. Now, unorthodox watch means unorthodox dimensions. This one is 43 mil in diameter. It's 11.8 mil thick at its thinnest, if you forgive my oxymoron. The side profile is very unusual. I'll show you that next. Hidden lugs with this one, though, mean a lug to lug of only 42 millimeters. 22 millimeter lug width, there's also a bit of taper on the leather strap down to 20, and on the scales, as supplied, 95 grams. The crystal is flat sapphire with anti-reflective undercoating, it has 100 meters of water resistance, which is excellent for a chronograph, and it's powered by a Miota 0S21 caliber, Bulova being owned by Citizen, who in turn own Miota, of course. Let's have a look at that movement then, what does it do? Well, it's a fairly straightforward single tick 60 minute chronograph with slow reset. One push of the 11 o'clock pusher to start, one push of the 11 o'clock pusher to stop, one push of the one o'clock pusher to reset. Maximum chronograph time of 60 minutes down to the nearest second only. No laps, nothing fancy, it's pretty basic. The crown at 12, you pull it out to the first position and you can adjust the date. You pull it out to the second position, you hack 
and therefore adjust the movement. No ticking second hand here, you notice. For some, that will be a positive. For some, that will be a negative. I think for a quartz caliber, people would rather not see the single tick, so overall, it becomes a positive. What about that bottom crown though? Well, remember I told you about the addition of the hour markers in the reissue? The bottom crown doesn't pull in or out, just twist it back or forth to adjust the angled ring with hour markings, meaning you can therefore track a second time zone. Definitely a bit of an odd one, this one. Bullhead chronogro with internal rotating bezel, not a combination I have seen elsewhere. Case finish, well, let's actually have a look at the case profile first because it's a bit of a weird one again, isn't it? Just under 12 mil at its thinnest, but closer to 14 and a half mil at the lug tips. It isn't top heavy though, like a lot of bull heads are, and the short lug to lug means it's also a lot more wearable than you might think this style of watch would be. In terms of finish, well, clearly there are two parts to this case. There is a really fine brushed finish to the outer curve with a very fine circular brush to the upper lug surfaces and a rougher vertical brush to those cutouts at either end. On top of that is what appears to be an anodized blue section. This section has the same outline as the pusher configuration, so it's circular but juts out in four places, three at the top and one at the bottom. Now the top crown is signed with the Bulova logo, just printed very, very small on it. The bottom crown is unsigned, flat sapphire integrating very nicely into that anodized section. The leather strap is really excellent. Not the first time I've said that with Bulovas, their standard straps are generally really good, meaning you don't have to rush out and replace them, thereby spending more money on your new watch. It's a nice shade of dark brown and some lovely stitching. It's ribbed, it's padded, it's very soft to the touch. Why do I sound like I'm describing a prophylactic here? There are two leather retainers, one of which is fixed, and there's even two finishes on the hardware. A twisting brush finished on the outer top surfaces, a high polished side, and front edge also high polished, etched with a period correct Boulevard brand name font. Dial and hands, well, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? Let's start at the outer edges and work our way in. There's a tachymeter scale that you'll probably never use, silver print against the anodized blue. Inside that are those adjustable hour markers, again, another feature you'll probably never use. Inboard of that, there are minute markers and quarter of a second markers. Now, you will definitely never use those because it's a single tick chrono. Inside of that, the flat main dial surface has a really nice metallic look with vertical brush. The date at three has a beveled recess frame. The Boulevard branding at nine is period correct as discussed. The blue parking meter sub register surrounds sits slightly raised off off the center dial section. It's the same blue and the printing on it has the same shade of silver used on the tachymeter. Hour markers are printed on the top scale and minute markers printed on the bottom scale. The hands are very simple, pencil style, high polish center, the majority being black with orange inlay. This is loomed, I will show you that shortly. Orange is clearly the third dial color then because it features on the two sub register hands as well as the chronograph hand and the five minute markers further out. Like I said, a lot going on, most of which you simply won't use. This watch is far more about the way it looks and the way it wears rather than what it actually does. So how does it wear? Well, actually, okay. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference, kind of average size. The head of this watch is perfectly balanced in terms of weight because it's not biased towards the bull head end like is quite often the case. The case itself is curved with a nice high polish undercut helping with comfort. It's super retro, isn't it? Terrifying to think that 1973 was 50 years ago. I mean, I wasn't here personally. I wasn't even a twinkle in anybody's eye. My parents hadn't met but I wasn't far away. The 70s is full of these outrageous chronographs. It's great to see them having a second moment in the sunshine and not just being purchased by people who remember the first. I think the pocket shot here is a good representation of how this one wears. It's unconventionally conventional. It looks odd, but once it's on your wrist, it wears pretty well. It is slightly top heavy, but it's such a good strap that it's overall very comfortable. Moans and niggles. Well, like any limited edition, if you are person number 5001 that decides they want a parking meter, then you're out of luck getting a new one, I'm afraid. The loom is garbage. There's no other way of putting it. Well, there are plenty of other ways of putting it, but that would result in demonetization. It's possibly the worst loom I have ever seen on a watch that is supposed to have loom. It's so awful, in fact, that other reviewers have failed to identify that it was even there. That's how bad it is. 
That's a bit of a shame because with 100 meters of water resistance and sapphire crystal, half decent loom would have made this one an almost sensible everyday option, if indeed this watch could ever be described as sensible. And uh, what time is it? It may be one of the weirdest watches I've seen recently, it's also one of the least legible. The hands are really small and thin, and the parking meter silhouette is so dark that the hands often disappear against it, and even when they don't, they're still really small and really thin. But despite my moans about loom and legibility, this isn't really supposed to be a sensible everyday watch now, is it? It's for people who love this brand, who love its rich history of original designs, who love the 70s designs in particular, and who want something that doesn't look like anything else in their collection. And unless they happen to have one of those six grand originals lurking in a box somewhere, that, my friends, is pretty much a given. So there you have it, definitely a niche piece, one for the collectors and the boulevard aficionados, perhaps one for those born in 1973 who don't want to pay six grand for an original. Thank you again, Paul, very much appreciated for the loan. If you like boulevard retro reissues as much as I like boulevard retro reissues, click here or click here. Thanks for watching this one, I hope to see you again in a future video.